actually attended the University of Washington in Seattle, thinking that it was in Washington, D.C. <laughs> so, the, uh, I did grow up, I grew up in Jeddah. You know, I'm a uh, Palestinian origin, I grew up in Jeddah. I was eager to go to the United States and get an education. A little too eager, maybe, and before the internet, maybe somebody used to build an app to help people like me a little better with geography. I thought, you know, I'm going to go to where all my friends are, and all my friends were at GW, I ended up in Seattle. Okay. And, and um, the reason why I thought it was interesting to share my story with you, because I actually, I did wealth as an entrepreneur out of college, because I ended up in Seattle, and I multiplied my wealth through venture capital. So as an entrepreneur, first of all, it's a ridiculous story. I became an entrepreneur so I can avoid getting a haircut. The, that's a true story. Because I ended up in Seattle, for those of you who remember in the early 90s, the grunge scene, you know, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, all those characters. And sadly, I was speaking to a group of, uh, um, of you know, a business school graduate at USC a couple of months ago, and not one person knew who Kurt Cobain is. I felt very old in that moment. <laughs> anyway, it was only because I ended up in Seattle that I ended up part of a grunge theme, throwing myself in mosh pits and growing my hair, that when my dad called and said, Yilla, come home, we want to visit you, and I thought, I'm not getting a haircut. <laughs> so I started a business, and that business succeeded, and then followed by another business that succeeded, and then, um, because I did not grow up with wealth, I generated my wealth from that pool of return um, by investing in venture capital. In fact, I'll tell you, the, the reason why I was able to start a family office, the reason why I was able to have, to put my professional career, uh, to make my professional career an expression of my passion, is because of venture capital. And that's interesting to you all in the room because that this asset class that Wally Hanna was talking about, if you know you make the right bets, then is quite a multiplier. And um, so what happened with me is, you know, I I took my proceeds from my entrepreneurial uh, endeavors, and somebody came to me and, and pushed me to invest. Pushed me, it's true. Pushed me to invest in a fiber optic company back in two thousand and one. And initially, I started uh, with this much of an allocation, because that's what I was comfortable in. And he kept pushing me to go further, and thankfully he did, because it ended up being a 24 to 1 return in three and a half years. So, you know, and of course, you know, the, that allowed me so many more options. And the biggest option it allowed me to do is to start putting my entrepreneurial and my investment uh, experience to work in something that I was very passionate about, which is the environment. And I'll tell you, this grew organically for me. You know, full cycle is an expression of what I wanted to create in that space, because one thing that I know is our investment dollars are much bigger than our, than our philanthropic dollars, at least most of the time, right? I mean, we have our pool of philanthropy, but it makes us, it's, it's a small, it's a percentage of our overall investment or spending or portfolio. So what happened to me is, because I grew up in Jeddah, I used to scuba dive. That was what we did on the weekends. And obviously, as you can imagine, things were a lot more lush and vibrant when I first started to scuba dive. And I noticed year after year, they started to deteriorate. You know, I, every time I go back, and visit my folks, I go to the same spot, and there were less fish and less corals. Ten years later, there were no fish, no corals, there were plastic bags and tigers. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, no matter, you know, well, first I thought, oh my god, I got rich too late. That's actually what I thought. I was like, you know, what's the point of becoming independently wealthy and free to enjoy this, you know, closed sphere that we're in? if it's going to look like this. And that really hit me, and then I thought, you know what? You know, the, we have the biggest engine, we're very uh, um, ingenious, we're very ingenious, very um, powerful species, and if we put our mind to something, we can make a difference. So I started 
Uh, investing in clean tech, yes, I was lucky living in California. You know, I was able to invest early in a lot of fantastic public companies you might have heard of at the time, no one's ever heard of them, like Tesla, like Bloom, like Uber when they were building the dream of autonomous electric vehicles. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to live in a world where 90% of cars are off the road and we're being transported by pressing a button on our phones, and that's probably going to happen sometime in the next 10 years. Autonomous vehicles are already on the road today in America. So it's a very, it's a very interesting, very lucrative experience. And you know, it's nice, I heard from Walid, that not only do you get to invest in, in EVP, but you also get to co-invest in the winners once they, uh, uh, once, once they point them out. That's a big deal. So I started, you know, uh, being an investor in clean tech, I started to see a lot of these companies that were not, maybe not solving for a consumer product, but they're solving for the carbon map that's right now out of whack on our planet. To give you an idea of what that is, is we generate about 42 gigatons more of carbon than the Earth absorbs. So what that means is, is by August 1st of last year, the regenerative capacity of planet Earth stopped and we started to borrow regenerative capacity from the future. So, and of course in 2019, that date will probably be July 21st. And it will continue to move back until we upgrade and invest in sustainable infrastructure and the technologies that are going to power the 21st century. So that's what Full Cycle does. We house those technologies under one umbrella and we've created a structure so that everybody can participate. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, not for any specific reason, but just to say, hey, this asset class that you're, that's being shared with you today can generate uh, enough wealth such that whatever your passion is, you can express it completely in the world in any way you wish. That's the beauty of venture capital, at least it was for me. So, um, first let's acknowledge what uh, ingenuity and capitalism has done. It's lifted billions of people out of poverty, it's cured diseases en masse. In, in the 1800s, the average lifespan was 29 years. Now it's 72. Unfortunately, it's now going down, back down again, mostly because of pollution. You know, air pollution now is the number one killer in the world. I surpassed smoking and heart disease. I promise not to depress you. This is, uh, this is a, uh, and we do live, you know, the reason why we have the problems that we have is because we're so, we have so much ingenuity, but we live in a closed sphere with limited resources. So, our infinite capacity to imagine is also limited by the finite resources that exist in this sphere that we call Earth. You know, the, and unfortunately, if we keep going down the rate that we're going, uh, uh, planet Earth will, will no longer be able to sustain at least our version of models, modern civilization. So we have to think of how we're going to solve for that. And the nice thing is there's plenty of technologies that will solve for that. There are so many ways to, uh, there's so many technologies that are proven, that are scalable, that any of us can participate in and help transition us from a high carbon to a low carbon future. And if you think about it, the IPCC, which is the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, that's already told us what the answer to this crisis is. It's literally to invest the number is a little outstanding. It's $2.3 trillion a year in low carbon infrastructure every year by 2050. And we also have to do something else, which is climate restoration, which is to suck down a lot of the carbon that's in the atmosphere. And the, the good thing is that the technology to do that already exists. It's called a tree. And, all, and there's, there's a new company that I just invested in that uses drones to actually shoot seeds into the ground and grow trillions of trees to make up for that piece of the equation. So um, I am very optimistic now that I understand what the carbon map is and how to pencil it out, that we can make a turn around the environment and this anxiety that we all hold around what's going to happen to our kids and grandkids. 
we now can feel hopeful that they can also live in a planet where if they go scuba diving, they can enjoy what I used to enjoy as a kid growing up. The, and you know, the, this, this quote is very uh, near and dear to my heart, and I leave it with you, is you know, the, get excited about this, uh, about this asset class. You know, the, get excited about being part of what's being presented to you today, because it was a very big contributor to my life and my ability to um, express my passions and interests in the world. And just remember that nothing we care about is going to matter if we can't drink the water and breathe the air. Let's keep in mind that you know, our wealth is also a tool for building a future that looks the way we want it to look. We don't just have to go on a ride with someone else. We can shape what the future looks like by being an active participant in what we invest in. So, you know, express that any way you wish. I thank you so much for hearing me and uh, this presentation for being here today. Shukran Jazeera.